Hi right, guys, welcome to my quick tutorial on how to install a second-hand aftermarket CPU cooler. Um, what I've got here is an older motherboard. So this is a P5511-56 motherboard with an i5-750 CPU. This is the motherboard and CPU I'm using in my low-cost uh, kind of console beating um, video that you guys can also watch. Um, and I found that this works quite well, just with the normal cooler on it. But I reckon that we're going to be able to get a significant overclock and then significant performance by switching this out to a um, aftermarket cooler. Now, I've actually got this cooler here. It is a cryo rig cooler. Um, new, they're about $50. This was about $30, I think. Um, it was installed on a, another computer, um, but I'm going to put it onto this one, right? Now, when you're going to install a um, aftermarket cooler, um, and one that's second-hand, you've got to be prepared for the fact that it's not going to come with all of the tools that you need. So one thing that's really important is having thermal paste. Come on, focus. Right? So this is just standard thermal paste that EK supplies with its water blocks. Right, but you can buy thermal paste from any good computer store. Uh, anything that you buy for about ten bucks should be fine. Um, there is actually um, better thermal paste will give you better performance, but for what we're doing, the bang for buck isn't there. There is no point using forty dollar thermal paste on a computer that costs less than three hundred dollars altogether. Right. So first thing we need to do is we need to take off the factory cooler. Um, it's highly possible that you've had this cooler on here for a really long time. Um, so, to take it off if you've forgotten, you've got these little pins here. Right? See these little pins? We've got to turn those. There's four of them, so we do the same to all four of them. And the little arrow will actually point inwards. Right? If you can see that. Okay. Then, we've got to lift it up. Lift up each one of them. Right? And then this should just come out. Okay? That was pretty straightforward. Now you may need to give it a little bit of a wiggle depending on how long it is in there, but it will pop out, okay? If it's not popping out, check the back of the board and just push the pins in yourself, okay? The last thing you want to do though is break your board. So this has got some thermal paste on it already, um, which is from the bottom of this, right? Now this is quite fresh, this thermal paste, so it's very easy for me to wipe off. If, this is a bit of a tip, if this had been used for a year or so and had no um, change, that thermal paste could be quite hard and caked on. Um, when I actually play, uh, when I'm reconditioning graphics cards, I always redo the thermal paste on them because it's always rock solid. One thing I use is this. It's called WD-40. Um, uh, look, I'm familiar with it in Australia. I don't know if you get it in other places. Um, and you can spray that on. Look, just to show you that this is, I'm not joking, you can actually see there I sprayed a little bit on. And it will, um, it's non-conductive and it's not like water. So you can put it on and it will just quickly wipe away whatever's on the CPU. That being said, anytime you put a form of liquid on your CPU or on your um, computer, you know, you've got to be mindful. So if you do do it, do it very, very sparingly, just a couple of drops. But uh, if you spill a lot of it on there, just let it all dry out before you do anything with it, all right? Okay, so... What we need to do is we need to install the brackets that are used for mounting this actual CPU cooler. Now, one thing I will say, this CPU cooler is actually, it's a bit fiddly. I've used much easier, um, or there are much easier to install units out there. Um, that being said, there are also much harder to install units out there. So when you're installing a second-hand one, make sure it's got the mounting hardware. If you're going to buy it off, eBay or Gumtree or Craigslist or whatever it is that you use, make sure you ask that it's got the mounting hardware because if it doesn't, it's useless for you, right? Now, again, as I said, this one's a little bit complicated. So I want to say complicated. It's not complicated. It's just a bit finicky. So I actually have to turn the board over and you can actually see the screws here. So it actually does up from the bottom. So if you have a computer case that doesn't have a cutout for the motherboard, um, you will have to take the motherboard out. That being said... I recommend you always take the motherboard out for the simple fact that, as you can see here, it's a lot easier for me to just do what I need to do with the motherboard 
free and without any kind of cables or anything on it, right? So it also gives you an opportunity to do a bit of a clean. Now, I've installed this in the past onto another computer, so I know how to install it. It's actually quite straightforward. Um, but if you're doing it, there is no harm in jumping online and every single company should have installation instructions on their website that you can download, right? Now I'm going to put a little bit of thermal paste on. Actually, I don't know if you guys, let's see if this will let you guys see this, right? So there you go. It's an Intel i5-750 CPU. It's a four core, 2.6 gigahertz CPU. Now I'm going to put some thermal paste on and that's enough, right? So we want to put... Enough that it's going to give us even coverage across the CPU. If you really wanted to, you could probably spread that out. But I find that um, it looks after it anyway. Right? Now this is where this comes into a bit of a challenge. So I want to install it this way. Bear in mind that this is the back of my computer. I have an extraction fan here. So this is going to blow fan uh, wind this way. This actually has a little arrow on it, which is quite good. This is going to blow wind out the back. Uh, out the back. So I want to install it like this. Now... I can't actually do this up, so I have to take, um, I have to do something different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this upside down, right? And I'm going to install it upside down. So measuring where everything goes, right? Okay. Now, I can feel that that is about right. So hopefully, yeah, so that's doing up. Right, now I'm just doing it up loosely for a couple of reasons. One, right, so that hasn't held. But I can push it together and it will grab. Okay, so as you can see, I'm just doing it up loosely with my hand, uh, with my fingers. Because um, I want to check some things, right? I want to check my fitment. Now, that looks good. Looks like there's a good tight spacing there. Um, this is actually a safety device here, so that you don't um, do it up too tight. So I know that I can do this up tight now, relatively tight. You never want to over tighten it. So as you can see, if you have a look, I'm really just using my fingers and just getting it to a point where it becomes difficult to turn, and then I'm not forcing it. So that will do. Now that's it. That's done, right? Well, one more thing left to do, and that's connect the fan. This is a PWM fan. Um, so I'm going to put this in here like this, all right? Now, this is a relatively modern CPU cooler. So it's only a couple of years old. Um, this will fit with the same mounting hardware on any 1150 series CPU socket. So this is 1156, but they're actually the same. So 1156, 55, 50 and 51. So that's Z97, Z87, Z170, all of those are the same. So if you are buying one second hand from someone who has used it on, say, an 1156 motherboard, and you're putting it onto an 1150 motherboard, it should work. Be thoughtful of your RAM here. This is designed specially to make sure that you can use whatever size RAM you want. I actually have special low profile RAM so I could use a cooler that came out and covered that RAM because it wouldn't be an issue but just keep that in mind right so anyway as you can see it's actually really quite straightforward make sure you've got some thermal paste have a tissue ready so you can wipe off any excess just a screwdriver whatever tools are required do a little prep work take it out make sure that uh, take the motherboard out make sure you're ready to go um, if you have any questions on this, um, or you want any advice on maybe what coolers are better than others, or uh, what's going to give you the best bang for your buck, let me know. Um, but my advice to you is always use an aftermarket cooler. These are rubbish. Rubbish. Thanks, guys. Cheers.